to um, those who have have signed in to our webinar tonight, predictable grafting options for any experience level and patient budget. I see that uh, attendees are, are, are get started in just about another minute to respect everybody's time. We'll get another minute or so and we'll get started with our webinar. Well, it's eight o'clock Eastern time. Is, um, your speaker tonight, Vinsky from Bingham Farms, Michigan, outside of uh, the Detroit area. Welcome to those who have signed in already. Uh, our topic is pretty close to my heart: um, predictable grafting options for any experience level and, and budget. Uh, you'll enjoy the program. Um, I just want to take care of some housekeeping uh, things first. Um, I just want to remind you that if you do have questions for me, uh, I would appreciate it if you type them in and we will answer as many of them uh, at the end of the program. I'd like to, we have a lot of information to cover. So if you do have some questions, please um, type them in and we will try to address each and every one of them uh, at the end of the program. And I'm proud to say that our sponsor is uh, Golden Dent also out of and uh, they will be issuing all your seats uh, for listening tonight please be patient uh, they will be contacting each and every one of you via email uh, with the CE certificate in the next couple of days so um, we we should start it to respect this time I know people are just signing in fast right now uh, I Pete, uh, this is Dr. Tim Kaczynski from uh, Bright Area, and our topic options for any experience and budget given to you by Golden Dent in the next couple of days. You'll be contacted by E. And if you do have any questions during the program, please type them in, and we'll try to bundle them together and answer as many of them as we can at the end of the program. So let's ask some questions. Are you are currently offering to your patients in your practice? If you're not, you really have to, to look at what you're doing that. Uh, certainly as a dentist, your patients that have grossly decayed teeth or periodontally involved teeth. And certainly we need to remove that when we remove a tooth, there's going to be bone changes. Bone is going to shrink to some degree. And so grafting or simple socket preservation, I feel, is a very important part of your practice. Uh, not only is it important to your patients to maintain uh, according to you. So hopefully we'll be able to answer questions for you uh, throughout the webinar today and alleviate some of your concerns about why you're not doing grafting in your practice. If you are grafting, the next question is, are you getting the clinical results you want on a predictable basis? If not, why? So what I'm going to hopefully uh, pass on to you uh, throughout the program tonight is predictable techniques. Uh, we can grow bone today. We can maintain um, ridges, plate of bone quite predictably. We must follow certain rules and guidelines, a recipe, so to speak. And I'm going to show successes with there are a lot of lot of things out there right now, and I'm going to demonstrate what works well in my hands, what I do every day in my practice. We have a very busy dental implant practice in the Detroit area where we're placing well over a thousand implants uh, a year, and I'm very proud of that. But to be able to do that, we have to provide a foundation for those implants in a lot of uh, circumstances. Another question, do you believe your patients are not willing to pay for the expense of the procedure? That's a legitimate question. Oftentimes, dental insurance doesn't cover the cost of our grafting procedures. And we're all aware that, that everybody is on a budget. It doesn't matter what we have or don't have. So, But I think it's important to not only yourself, but educate your patients on the benefit of socket 
procedures. I'm going to go through some procedures today that are very cost effective uh, for the patient and you can pass on any of the savings that, that you are able to receive in purchasing these products um, to, to pay, al allow your patients to have high quality socket preservation and grafting procedures. So we're going to try to uh, alleviate some of your concerns of the cost and more importantly your patients concern of the cost um, and efficacy of our procedures. Would you like to place implants? But first you need to get more comfortable with extractions and grafting. Dental implants is the, the hottest thing in dentistry today. It's the most financial rewarding procedure that we could possibly do. Our patients are very aware of the benefits of implant dentistry. Uh, they're able to, to Google search what a dental implant is or missing a tooth or toothache. And um, as a general dentist who is an educator who, who teaches implant procedures all over the country, I think it's imperative that my general dentist colleagues get involved with implant dentistry. However, you have to have all the tools, the proper tools to be able to properly place dental implants and get the results that your patients deserve. To do that, we have to understand the importance of atraumatic extractions and grafting or socket preservation techniques. I know that each practice is unique and different. I, I have helped in a lot of practices, and it's funny how um, our, our offices are all set up differently. We use different materials and different products. I talk to dentists all over the country and teach dentists all over the country on, on a regular basis on their concerns. So again, what I'm going to demonstrate today is not a myriad of different products, rather what works predictably in my practice. And you're gonna hear, hear me use that term quite frequently tonight. So I'm gonna share my experiences on how I am successful in grafting in Detroit area, even in down economies. Your patients deserve this type of, of procedure and it's certainly within the scope of every general dentist and every, gen, every dentist out there. So our objective tonight, uh, to be clear, um, we're gonna do an overview of several different bone grafting materials and membranes or barriers and the methods that I use to get predictable results. We're going to show you easy to understand step-by-step -step instructions, how to immediately implement predictable grafting into your practice. We're gonna talk a little bit about atraumatic extractions and that's, that's uh, a very important term for me, atraumatic. We'll describe what that means to me in a few minutes and why it's so important that we graft um, our, our edentulous spaces. We're also, it's important that we be able to communicate to our patients, to educate and instruct and make our patients aware of the options that are available, available to them. So let's get right to the chase. Let's look at some, some simple cases. And um, option number one, the Osteogen plug. An Osteogen plug we can, we can purchase from Golden Dent and um, uh, uh, Kurt Lawler, um, who runs Golden Dent, will be at the end of the program and he'll talk to you about uh, different specials and, and products they have. But I wanna go through the clinical applications of something that each of you should have in your practice. The Osteogen plug is simply a bioactive calcium appetite material in a bovine Achilles tendon matrix. It's um, compressible, but it's not truly a, a, like a collagen plug, which really is not a graft material at all. This material uh, mimics the organic and inorganic components of physiologic bone. The bovine Achilles tendon um, is a collagen carrier. It's, it has firmness to it, and it allows for scaffolding, scaffolding of the keratinized tissue to develop. I've been working with this product this pro years now and have done countless histologic evaluations of cases where I've atraumatically removed, meaning I've removed and cells intact, place this, um, and I'll show you the technique in a moment, and allow it to heal over a period of time, three to four months, and we get nice bone turnover. I think it's important that we read putting a product into a socket, it's not like a, it's not like it's gonna get hard over. Rather, as dentists, we understand 
that the, the physiologic back that material, regardless of what it is, and it's going and class act, it creates physiologic response, allows osteoblasts to lay down new bone. So whatever material that we're placing today throughout all our techniques, that material is going to be replaced by the patient's own bone over a period of time. Fast that occurs depend on the materials that we use and of course the, the patient's biological makeup. So let's look at this osteogen plug. Um, we have a tooth that is deemed non-restorable, this molar tooth. And we are going to remove this tooth atraumatically. And to do that, we're going to use something called the physics forceps. And, and I assume many of you who are listening to me today um, have an understanding or concept of what physics forceps is. It is a remarkable tool that I would not practice without, in, in all honesty. I use it just about every day in my practice. Um, it's an instrument that allows me to remove teeth without squeezing or pulling or tugging on the patient. I've mentioned atraumatic extraction. What does that mean to me? An atraumatic extraction, um, number one, allows me to maintain bone. As an implant dentist, as a general practitioner, maintaining the facial plate of bone is very important. It makes my procedures that much easier. So if I'm able to remove a tooth without damaging the facial plate of bone, I would call that an atraumatic extraction. Number two, atraumatic to the patient. Because of the unique design of this instrument, it allows me to remove teeth, oftentimes with the patients not even being aware that I'm removing the tooth. How do you remove a tooth conventionally? You probably take a periotome or a periosteal elevator instrument. You probably have some type of luxator or elevator. You try to wiggle the tooth out of the socket a little bit and you grab on with a conventional forcep and you pull, you tug, you go mesial distal, you go buccal lingual, you do figure eight to remove that tooth. Well, the patient is, is responding to all that pressure. With the physics forcep, um, the patient's not, not having that force. It consists of two components. The beak, which is the working end of the instrument, is like a shovel-shaped edge that will engage the lingual or palatal aspect of a tooth, one to three millimeters subgingival on the root structure. The second part of the instrument is called a bumper, and that's simply a fulcrum point. It's a center of rotation that allows the, the um, the instrument to rotate um, up and out of the socket so that it, the bumper is not the working end of the instrument at all rather it is simply a fulcrum so what we're doing we are not squeezing the handles of these instruments so the patient's not experience a lot of discomfort or press pressure we are creating tension onto that lingual or palatal aspect of the root this tension is causing a physiologic response. It's causing um, a, a um, enzyme to be released, which is then causing the periodontal ligament to disintegrate. What is holding a tooth in place? Obviously, the answer is the periodontal ligament. And the periodontal ligament, once it's destroyed, allows the tooth to come up and out of the socket. So it is a very, very nice instrument that I use, as I said, daily. I will Atraumatic to the bone, atraumatic to the patient, and finally, atraumatic to me as the practitioner. I want to save my body. I want to save my hands, my arms, my shoulders, my back. Um, and this instrument allows me to remove teeth with very little physical uh, exertion. So it's a very important. There's no, there's no forearm, there's no bicep, there's no shoulder pressure um, in using this instrument at all. So this, the instruments, and, and, and Kurt at the end of the program can certainly describe uh, in detail the, the uh, financial investment in this, but it's simply, uh, the standard set is simply a series of four instruments, an upper right, upper anterior, upper left, and a universal lower instrument. You need all four because they are shaped differently, shaped uniquely for different parts of the mouth, but when used properly, they work very well. And maybe Kurt at the end can discuss some of the education programs that we, we have 
we do a one day program at our University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry where um, doctors come in, we do very little lecturing, uh, but we get right on the clinic floor and we may treat 80 patients on a Saturday where every doctor is removing 20 to 30 teeth using this technique. Um, Dr. Ara Nazarian and I also have a two day program where we do one day of lecturing in one of the nicest hotels in the city. And on the second day, again, we go to our clinic at the University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry, and uh, we treat patients anywhere from 65 to, to 80 patients, where all the doctors will use all the materials, all the grafting materials that we're demonstrating here today, um, and also will work with different membranes that we're discussing today and learn suturing techniques. Just a wonderful hands-on program. There's nothing like working on live patients. So what makes it work? Again, this is a, a modified class one lever. My dad was a carpenter. If you have a nail and a piece of wood, how do you remove that nail to get it out? Well, you could take a pair of pliers and you could do figure eight motions and back and forth and right and left. And eventually you'll probably get that nail out doing a lot of damage to the wood. Or you could use a class one lever, such as the back end of a hammer, and the nail is easily removed. Well, that's the concept of the golden, golden dent physics forcep. It's just a wonderful instrument, and I advise that you at least look into it. So in this situation, this clinical situation, we're going to engage the working end of the instrument, the beak, onto the lingual aspect of the root. We will place the bumper or the center of rotation or the fulcrum as far down the vestibule as possible or in the maxilla as high up the vestibule as possible. We are not squeezing the instrument. We are not squeezing the handles. Rather, we are simply rotating the wrist towards the shoulder. This is creating tension on the lingual aspect of this root, which will, in a matter of a minute or so, allow this tooth to be elevated up and out of the socket. It's not pulling the tooth facially, so we're not breaking the facial plate of bone. Rather, this tooth is following the path of insertion of the curvature of that instrument, and the tooth is actually lifting up and out of the socket um, once the periodontal ligament uh, is destroyed by the physiologic enzymatic release. The instrument is not intended to remove the tooth in total. Rather, it's in intended to luxate the tooth one to three millimeters. I will then take what we call a tooth delivery instrument, simply grab onto that tooth and rotate and that tooth is simply removed out of the socket atraumatically, remain, uh, retaining the facial plate of bone, quite remarkably. Now, socket preservation is, is very important, and to do that, you need the proper tools. Um, we, uh, Golden Dent has a grafting kit that I, I uh, would, would hope that you would at least look at. It's, it's self-contained, relatively inexpensive, the most important thing that we do when we have an infected socket area is we curette. I like to say we curette, 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 stop, curette, curette, curette. You have to have sharp instruments, correct instruments to be able to do this. Any type of granulation, uh, soft tissue needs to be removed. Any type of purple blood needs to be removed. Now, red blood is healthy. I like that. But anything purple blood uh, or, or little tags of tissue needs to be removed. So let's talk briefly about the different types of defects. And in our hands as general dentists, we are going to handle two situations today. We're gonna to handle where we have all four walls intact. We'll call that a four wall defect. All the walls are there. Therefore, we, we basically have a waffle cone or an ice cream cone or a cereal bowl. Having that type of result makes the, makes the grafting procedure fairly routine because all we have to do is put something inside. And then using the osteogen plug is even simpler because we don't even need a membrane because the, the bovine Achilles tendon, as I said, prevents invagination of epithelium into the, the uh, calcium appetite particulate. But oftentimes we do lose the facial plate of bone. We'll call that a three wall defect. When we don't have a facial wall, I'm gonna show you techniques where we can remarkably and predictably grow bone on the facial aspect um, of our cases. It's a little bit different technique, uh, but we'll demonstrate that in a few moments. So we take a periapical and certainly we have all the roots removed. Please always remove all the roots. Um, I see it all the time where root tips are left in. 
uh, it's imperative that we remove those those root tips um, or any type of, of um, remnants uh, from the socket. That's where physics forcep comes in because it's very rare because we're not squeezing that we have fractured root tips in, in the sockets. This is what the osteogen plug looks like. There's two sizes, a large and a small, or a, a fatter one and a thinner one. Um, I like to say large and small to be politically correct. And it is a moldable, but it simply taking this piece, and I'm, I'm taking it with a forcep to the socket. And here's just the, the uh, schematic of it. Uh, we've already mentioned this large and slim um, we've already talked about the material uh, product itself it's a bioactive calcium appetite in a bovine achilles carrier and the benefits of, are remarkable number one we get scaffolding a bone remember we already said osteoclasts will invade osteoblasts lay down new bone the material will conform to the shape of the socket because it has substance to it it's not like a collagen plug and I, I would challenge those of you out there who are just using a collagen plug, you're really not grafting and you're not getting predictable results. I want you to learn predictable results. I want to make sure that we have a site that we can go and place implants in the future. So this material does not fall out. Now, I do suture it in place. Okay, I do put a couple sutures to hold it in place. Um, it absorbs the blood very, very well and it will form fit to the, to the socket site. Um, there's no mixing with it. You open the package and you basically pack it into position. Now you're packing it into the socket firmly, but we're not condensing it. This is not amalgam. You don't want to crush the material. It's radiolucent on placement, but over time it goes, it becomes more radio opaque, usually within three to five months. Now that's a tremendous advantage to us because periodically we can take, bring the patient back, take a radiograph, and see how that the, the bone has changed. Now, it's important also to realize, however, that how does a socket heal? Well, it heals from the apex towards the crest, always. That's physiologic. So you're going to see more radio opacity, more natural looking bone towards the apex as it, as it heals towards the, towards the crest of the ridge. So here we're simply firmly placing the material into the socket, condensing it. It's not amalgam, but placing it firmly. And here we do have a, a, a plugger uh, in our grafting kit, and this is what it looks like. It's very easy, very clean doctors. This is a matter of minutes. So some of you may say, you know, all oh, my patients can't afford grafting or they don't want to. Well, this is a very, a relatively very inexpensive material. It's inexpensive to purchase. Again, you can get it through Golden Dent. Uh, we do suture it in the position, but we don't need a membrane with this product. We, because of the composition of it, we don't need a membrane. So we don't have that added expense. And most importantly, it's a three-minute procedure. Once you get the tooth out, atraumatically, we're putting this, this product in. There's not a lot of chair time involved. So you, as a practitioner, can decide what's a fair price for you to charge for something that's going to prepare you, hopefully, for a dental, prepare the patient for a dental implant in the, in the future. Again, it's very financial rewarding in a very simple process. Um, I'm not using a membrane and I'm using suture techniques. Now, it, my suturing techniques are important. We teach this in our level two uh, golden dent program at the university. Um, all our needles are reverse cutting. So most of us would probably use the needle and go from facial to, to lingual. Well, oftentimes we will grab onto the uh, graft material, grab onto the membrane and pull it out. So just reverse the needle. Go from the crest to the facial, turn the needle around, go from the crest to the lingual, and then tie your knots. So from the crest to the lingual. And we simply did a couple cross-stitch sutures just to hold the graft material in place. It's radial uh, lucid immediately upon placement. And this is one week post-operatively. You can see the epithelium is actually growing over the top of the mem uh, over the top of the graft material. And you can, you can actually see the particulate material there. Now, I do like to tell my patients that when we're doing grafting, they're going to see something white or gray or off-white. Oftentimes, patients will think it's, it's an infection or pus, and it's not. You have to tell them that that has to stay there. 
I like to bring my patients back in a week to remove the sutures. These are Vicryl sutures, and certainly they are resorbable in a few weeks. I like to bring the patient back to monitor them, take the sutures out, and we now have a site that in a few months can be an acceptable um, um, grafted um, bone contour that will allow me to predictively place an implant. Let's look at another case, osteogen plug. Can't be any simpler than this. We have a tooth that is deemed non-restorable. I guess we all agree that this tooth, uh, to try to save it would be heroic. So we want to remove the tooth, but look how decayed that tooth is. This may predict may be a difficult extraction for some of you out there. But again, using the golden dent physics forcep, the procedure becomes fairly routine and fairly simple. The instrument, the, the beak of the physics forcep must have a purchase point. Um, I, obviously, if you have a broken tooth, the instrument must engage the lingual or palatal aspect of the root. So to do that, I'll take a, a surgical burr, a 557 long surgical burr, and I'm simply flattening the lingual root structure so that I can have a purchase point for my beak. And this uh, little uh, video demonstrates it. I'm not removing bone, rather I'm flattening the root of the tooth which will allow the, the, the beak to engage onto the root of the tooth, one to three millimeters subgingival. The bumper is placed onto the, the, uh, into the vestibule as far down as possible. Without squeezing the instrument, I'm simply rotating my wrist towards the shoulder. And in a matter of a minute or so, that tooth will come up and out of the socket very, very predictably, maintaining the facial plate of bone, which again is it's nice to have and it's very important. So here you can see the vestibule was not very deep here, but I'm engaging the palatal aspect where I, I flatten that, that um, lingual tooth structure. I'm placing the bumper into the vestibule and I'm rotating my wrist. And in a matter of a minute or two, this tooth luxates up and out. I'll take my tooth delivery instrument and remove the tooth out of the socket. More times than not, this is the only instrument that I'll use to remove a tooth. Again, recipe. It's imperative that you curette any infected area, any purple blood, any granulation tissue from that socket. Here's the uh, uh, osteogen plug. This is a large one, but I cut it. I, I shaped it a little bit. I'm taking it to site, placing it firmly into the socket, and then condensing it, not crushing it, but condensing it. The same procedure, a couple sutures just to hold it in place. Immediate post-op, we have uh, radiolucency, and we're going to see how this bone is going to change. Now, I'm going to predict that we're going to get bone healing from the apex towards the crest. So we're going to see more opacity towards the apex than we are at the crestal area over a short period of time. Three months. Look at how the bone has changed. The crestal bone is still a little bit immature, but the apical half is very, very mature and um, um, allows me to prepare a site for a dental implant. The epithelium has grown over the top, so we have a nice healthy situation, and we will predictably place our, our implant. This is not an implant training program, we can do that another time, but, but what we have is a sharp pilot burr. We're going to uh, engage depth and width. We're going to widen it, and here we're harvesting the, the, the bone. This is not graft material anymore. Remember I said, it's been converted to bone. And using our, our technique, our implant, um, uh, um, our implant, um, surgical techniques. We're preparing the osteotomy site. This is the Han dental implant from Glidewell Lab. It's a, a very nice implant that uh, aggressively threads into the socket. We're ending up, we're torquing this at 45 newton centimeters. Because we were able to torque it to uh, a certain level, I'm able to make this a one-stage procedure. I'm placing a taller healing abutment that is penetrating through the epithelium. This is immediate surgery. Doctors, general practitioners out there, this is something that you have to get on board with. Implant dentistry is ready for you. Your patients are asking you for it. And certainly when you're trained properly, 
um, you can get the same results that I can get. Immediate post-op um, radiograph showing the implant in place and the taller healing abutment penetrating through the soft tissue. After approximately three months of integration, I will come in and you can see the, the uh, periodontal cuff around that implant. And then make our uh, digital impressions um, in our practice. Um, we take our impression and the, my lab will then fabricate in this situation and a in this situation that um, uh, allow me to for this miss for this. So here we're placing our careful margins. This is what we teach our implant program. They are at the area. My margins are not subject. Very easy to clean some, uh, very easy to maintain the periodontal health of of the abutment and our final boxer crown in position. We've provided quite a service for this for this patient, made ourselves feel really good. This is some, this is a rewarding part of dentistry today. And a final radiograph. And you can see how the, the bone is starting to look more and always stay natural than it had before. So I think we can all agree that, that this graft option could be used immediately by all of you here. I would challenge you that only use it when you have walls intact. This is affordable for the doctor and for the patient. Let's get into more sophisticated um, grafting procedures. An allograft is simply a, a graft from um, the same species. Uh, our allografts are human. Um, they're harvested from a human. And there's, there's two types of, of bone material. There's cortical, which we know is the hard crystal bone on the outside of bone, and cancellous, or the medullary bone in, in the, the center. Normally, I will use a combination of cortical cancellous bone. We also have mineralized and demineralized. Mineralized meaning the calcium and phosphorus is maintained in the particulate. Demineralized meaning it's processed where, where the um, um, chemical composition is changed. I like to use a mineralized cortical cancellous combination, 250 to 1,000 microns. Uh, Kurt at the end can describe that with you. However, with allograft materials, you must protect it. It's not like the osteogen plug, um, which has that, that um, keratinized tissue barrier. We must protect our allograft materials from invagination of epithelium. And we do that by using a high quality membrane. A membrane is simply a, a band-aid, again, that prevents invagination of epithelium. Bone grows much slower than epithelium. If you're not using a membrane, doctors, you may be, may be grafting. If you're not using a membrane properly, again, the case becomes unpredictable. And that's not what I want to leave you with today. I want to leave you with predictable results. So here we have a tooth. Uh, this patient was referred to me um, with a non-restorable fractured maxillary cuspid tooth. Uh, it was fractured um, horizontally at the post line. You can actually see the fracture. So removing this tooth with teeth that are restored on either side can be a difficult traumatic thing. But with the physics forcep, we're able to remove this tooth atraumatically. Atraumatic to me, atraumatic to the patient, and atraumatic to the facial plate of bone. Here we're using the Vatex CBCT, which allows me to take individual uh, um, um, three-dimensional sagittal views. And um, you can see the facial plate of bone is very thin. We expect the facial plate of bone to be thin in the premaxilla. But again, taking the physics forcep, engaging the, the uh, palatal aspect, one to three millimeters subgingival, placing the uh, bumper as high up the vestibule as possible, never squeezing the handles. Rather, I am simply rotating my wrist towards the corner of the, of the right eye. In a matter of a few moments, a minute, maybe two, the tooth will pop. You won't hear a pop, you'll feel it disengage. And that's because of the physiologic response of the body, creating an enzyme that is breaking down the periodontal ligament. It's important to realize, remember we had a horizontal fracture at the post line. If you put a lot of tension or force on this tooth with conventional techniques, 
you will have a root tip that you're going to have to dig out. With the physics forcep, I'm not, I don't need to do that. I'm taking my tooth delivery and look at the contour of that root of a cuspid tooth, maintaining the facial plate of bone. Do you believe me? Well, I did a post-op CT for education purposes. That facial plate of bone is fine. However, I look like I have a little dehiscence right at the apex of that root. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. But I want to make sure that I protect my graft from invagination of epithelium in the area. Again, for education, I wanted to show you, we, we teach you um, how to do um, conservative flap techniques in our level two program. Uh, and you can look at amplify.com uh, to see the programs. But I'm actually showing you that that facial plate of bone is intact on a very, very difficult extraction. There are different membranes that are available through Golden Dent. Um, a membrane that I've used for, for probably 10 years now, uh, EpiGuide, is a, um, is a uh, uh, synthetic material. Um, it's a polylactic acid bioresorbable polymer. And it has worked really well for me. Uh, it's very easy to maintain and very easy to control. Um, there are sides to it. We, there's a side, a rough inside and a smooth side, smooth side towards the bone, um, if you want to remember that. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful product. The other product is called Collaguide, and that is a long-lasting collagen membrane. It's a, uh, a bovine collagen matrix, and um, um, so it's, it's from, from a, a cow. And again, it is an excellent product. When you order something through Golden Dent, uh, I think it's imperative to know that, that you're getting a lot of savings. I know that as general dentists, we have sales rep come to our offices all the time. And the one thing that I'm going to ask you to do when a rep says, oh, I have a product that does the same thing, but is a lot less expensive. You need to look them straight in the eye and say, how long is it going to last? How long is it going to last? That membrane needs to last a minimum of six weeks. Both of these products last much more than that. They are resorbable. We don't have to go back and, and remove them, nor do we have to get, have to get primary closure with either, either of these products. So it, the product, whatever you use, has to last six weeks. A collagen plug does not last six weeks. It lasts a few days. So if you're going to get predictable results, you need to use a long-lasting resorbable membrane. EpiGuide, as I said, is polylactic, uh, three layers. Um, and it's just, it's a nice product to work with. And in this situation, what I did was I had flapped the site and I could see, I could see that I had a small defect right at the apex. When we're placing any membrane, we have to extend the membrane at least two millimeters beyond any defect. This is true if we, we are missing the facial plate of wall or if we have a small defect here. So I'm simply, seeing the defect and laying my membrane beyond the defect. Here we're using the Gold Oss um, from Golden Dent. Again, a, it's a uh, putty allograft material. Um, it's osteoinductive. It's, it's, just, it's a great product to work with and very easy to control. So basically what I'm simply doing is injecting it uh, into my socket site. And you can see the particulate. It's cortical cancellous mineralized. And because I was able to maintain that facial plate of bone, I made my osteotomy site, then filled it with our graft material, and I'm simply threading my implant into my, my site. I'm folding over the membrane onto the palatal aspect, and that membrane has to be passively placed. Doctors, we can't force it. We can't lay it on top. We need to, to be comfortable um, excising the tissue, pulling it away, and allowing that membrane to lay flat. Using my suture, suturing techniques that I demonstrated earlier, going from the crest to the facial, from the crest to the lingual, I'm simply able to suture the membrane down so it's not going to be released. Now, doctors, a lot of you, um, and again, just through my experience and my own experiences, when I did um, uh, grafting and membranes before, I probably didn't place the membrane correctly, and I would suture into it, or the staff would suck it through with the suction, or the membrane would come out before I had a chance to remove the sutures. And 
as part of my recipe, I'm telling you that membrane needs to be maintained for a minimum of six weeks. If you do that, if we're able to achieve that goal, we will grow a facial plate of bone each and every time. Our post-operative CT, again, for education, indicates nice position of the implant. And look at the graft product uh, on the anterior and the facial aspect of this um, uh, implant placement. After four months of healing, I expose the implant. I make an impression. Um, I like to use Kettenbach material. And maybe Kurt at the end can describe um, any specials he has with that. It is a German-made material, and they sell direct. It's probably 30 to 40% less expensive than any material you're using today. That's a big savings for something you're going to throw in the garbage as soon as you're done with it. Very high quality from Kettenbach. We uh, did a custom abutment and a final crown. And actually, our final crown probably looks more periodontally sound than the adjacent, adjacent teeth. I referred this patient back to, to the doctor, um, uh, and the patient was thrilled with the result. Allograft particulate, another way that allograft material, remember we said it's um, mineralized cortical cancellous, 250 to 1,000 micron particulates. Um, it comes in a powder form that we will wet with sterile water or sterile saline and uh, go through the same process. We have two teeth that were deemed non-restorable, uh, fractured, again, using the golden Dent physics forcep, I'm able to atraumatically remove these teeth. Two rooted, uh, first bicuspid tooth. We have two sockets. Now, it's imperative that we curette this area and we evaluate the quality of bone that's available. The facial plate of bone here is missing. So we can't just ignore that fact. Here's the, the uh, Golden Dent grafting kit that was created. It's a very high quality kit, looks great, a self-contained. You need to have all your instruments in one place so that when you tell your staff, I'm doing an upper right uh, extraction, they're gonna bring you the upper right physics forcep and your grafting kit and the graft material of your choice. I'm taking an Orban knife here and um, um, it allows me, an Orban knife is a very sharp instrument that allows me to have good control to make my envelope flap. And you can see the facial plate of bone is tremendously removed, not from my extraction techniques, from the damage caused by the fracture of those teeth. We're, we're uh, lifting the tissue away from the, the palatal aspect also. Why are we doing that? Because I must maintain a uh, pass, uh, passive fit with my membrane. Um, the types of allograft, again, we talked about this, cortical cancellous and a cortical cancellous combination. This is what it looks like. We, we give you a, a little sterile uh, dish. Um, you pour it in. We can wet it with sterile water or saline. It will turn into a gel, okay, over a period of time. And remember how this acts. It allows uh, as a scaffold, and it allows for stimulation of, of um, physiologic properties of the bone, osteoclastic activity will engage, allowing osteoblasts to lay down new bone over a period of time. Here we're using the Epiguide material. Again, you can see no hands. I placed implants, not an implant course, but I passively placed that a membrane beyond the defect, at least two millimeters. I'm taking my golden dent, a particulate that's been wet and placing it laying the membrane over the top. Again, it's very passively fitting. Uh, it's not going to disengage, suture it into position. And even though it's exposed, this is a long lasting resorbable membrane. If it will last six weeks, we will get an outstanding result. After healing, after healing, you can see we have, we're taking our impression. We have great attached gingiva, a healthy situation for our eventual Bruxer zirconia crowns. Another allograft putty material, let's look at this. We have a periodontal defect. Again, a horizontal fracture at the post line. Is this a case that you would wanna do? It's in the aesthetic zone. So this tooth is deemed non-restorable. What are we gonna do? I'm gonna take my physics forcep, engage the beak onto the palatal aspect, put the bumper as high up the vestibule as possible. I'm rotating my wrist, never squeezing the instrument towards the, the nostril. You can even see there's a little pus coming from that site, from the facial. 
I'm not squeezing. I'm simply rotating. The tooth will pop. You won't hear it pop. You'll feel it disengage. What do I do next? I take my tooth delivery instrument. I'm simply going to rotate that tooth out of the socket. Atraumatic extraction, right? Atraumatic to the doctor, atraumatic to the patient. Oftentimes, the patient will look at you and say, are you kidding? You're done? Wow. However, we have to evaluate the tissue. We take a radiograph. Entire roots are gone. But look, I take my curette. Do I have a facial defect here? Absolutely. So doctors, what do we have to do? We have a facial defect. We have to expose that facial defect. You have to feel comfortable laying a flap in these situations because when we do our particulate, we must place our membrane or barrier at least two millimeters beyond the defect. How do we know where two millimeters is? We have to see it. So here I'm taking my Goldoss particulate allograft and wetting it. It will form a gel, taking my Epi guide, cutting it to, um, uh, to shape, contour. I'm also wetting that. Taking my Orban knife, maintaining the papilla, papilla saving. You can see I've made no vertical incisions here. Elevating the soft tissue. I'm going, again, not an implant case. This is a Han dental implant that has aggressive threads. I made my osteotomy palatal to the socket. You can certainly see I have no facial wall on this implant. The implant is very, very solid in that, in that socket, but I have no facial wall. So what am I gonna do? I'm simply going to place my membrane at least two millimeters or more beyond the defect. I'm going to take my wet uh, allograft material and pack it between the implant in this situation and the membrane itself. I'm going to passively slide that membrane onto the, onto the palatal aspect. Now, sometimes the, your membrane is a little bit too short. You can layer two pieces of membrane together. Using my suturing technique that I demonstrated earlier, you can see we save the papilla. We um, protected the allograft from invagination of epithelium. We maintained the attached gingiva on the facial aspect. Immediate surgical placement, our implant, and you can see how it's grafted. One week post-op, patient was wearing a little uh, flipper appliance. You can see the membrane is still there. The epithelium has not grown over the top. I'll remove those sutures. Four months post-op, we have attached gingiva. You can just see the, the top of the implant. I will expose it. I will put a healing abutment. It will allow to heal. You can see the nice tissue cuff that's formed. The Glidewell lab will make me a nice zirconia custom abutment. Again, look at my margins. They're at the, the, the tissue level or just slightly subgingival. Custom abutments is what I do uh, to get the best results I can. You can see, clearly see the margins, position of the implant, and the final, this is a zirconia uh, Bruxer anterior aesthetic crown, which resolved the patient's problem and um, uh, gave us a decent result. Um, this is exciting to me, autogenous dentin graft and membrane. Um, here we're using, rather than, than using a, an allograft or a synthetic material from a, from a bottle, I'm actually going to use the patient's dentin as my graft material. Well, why is that important? It's, it's an, an, an Autograft is uh, normally we would take bone from the symphysis or from the ramus area. Um, there's nothing better. It's the gold standard, right? The patient's own bone. Well, dentin has the same um, um, uh, bone proteins, uh, growth factors that uh, autogenous bone would have. So in this situation, we have a, um, a situation where we're going to remove these grossly decayed teeth using the golden dent physics forcep, atraumatically removing these teeth. Now it's imperative that we clean them. I'll scrub these teeth um, and I, will re I actually will remove the coronal portion. You don't want any filling material, no composite, no amalgam and no root canal, no gutta percha. Um, so we'll scrub these teeth and uh, remove all the artificial material. Uh, any traces of decay I will remove and um, we will scrub them and dry them before we put them in something called the Golden Dent Smart Dentin Grinder. 
So here we have our atraumatic extraction site. And I'm going to use my Orban knife from the Golden Dent Grafting Kit. And I'm going to expose the tissue, both facially and palatally. Um, to, to alleviate, I'm going to flatten that ridge to some degree. This is going to be a site for dental implants um, in the future. I'm going to use my bone file to flatten any spicules. And this is it. This is a, just an amazing machine. It's so exciting uh, to be a part of this. Um, so I'm going to take those dried teeth with all the decay and, and um, um, artificial materials away from it. And I'm going to uh, put it in one of these are disposable chambers, these grinding chambers. Um, and then again, Kurt uh, Lawler at the end of the program can discuss the cost of all of this. But um, these are in, in a sterile package, they're one time use. And we will turn on the device um, and it will grind the components in a matter of about 30 seconds. And look at the amount of graph material that I, I was able to harvest from these um, uh, root structures. Um, we'll then clean this. We have to clean the particulate dentin for about 10 minutes. So we'll pour it into a little, a little glass uh, container and add 0.5 uh, sodium hydroxide um, material, and we let it sit for a little bit. And then we will pour off the excess. Here we're, we're adding the material. We'll pour off the excess, dry it with a little um, gauze. And then we will rinse the particulate for about three minutes using a buffered saline uh, solution. And again, uh, it'll soak. So the whole entire process maybe will take 15 minutes. But my, my team will do that while I'm preparing the surgical site. It looks just like what you poured out of a bottle and wet. So I'm taking my, my dentin particulate graph to the site, packing it, and then I'm going to cover it over with my membrane passively as we've demonstrated before, and we're suturing. Now, what's remarkable about this, okay? I said that with the Osteogen plug, I will wait three, four, five months. With our allograph material, I'll wait four, five months. Well, this is healing around that site, and I will actually go back and place my dental implant in about seven weeks. So about half the time, and that's because this is part of the human body. The body does not have to change the, the uh, foreign body, um, change it over to convert it to bone because we have all the proper uh, growth factors within the um, autogenous bone itself. So you can see, I, I did a CT for you. You can see after seven weeks, we have a pretty decent um, uh, turnover to bone uh, starting from the apical portion. I flapped the site again to show you that I was able after seven weeks to place my dental implants very predictably uh, into the site. Here we're suturing one week post-op, and after a couple weeks, that tissue heals wonderfully, and I can go and load those implants in a very short amount of time. So I want to keep it simple. This is what I recommend. I think you should have an allograft product, 250 to 1,000 microns of, of mineralized cortical cancer particulate. You can do it in a putty form if you find that more convenient, or a particulate, a powder form that you can wet with sterile water or sterile, sterile saline. I think you should have osteogen plugs. When you have the facial plate of, of bone intact, I don't think there's anything easier or more cost effective than the osteogen plug. I think that um, you, you need a membrane. The EpiGuide membrane or the collagen membrane that we talked about um, are both excellent, excellent products um, to use. I don't really have a, a, a favorite. Um, it's really what you feel comfortable using. And that's why coming to, to one of our courses where you can use the product, you'll learn what you feel more comfortable with. Um, autogenous, using the dentin grinder, is a wonderful uh, product to use when you, when you have larger areas to graft. 
and it's a lot of fun. And the patients really respond to that. They, they think it's, it's, it's high end stuff. Um, it's not expensive. You do have that, um, disposable grinder, uh, but that's not a very expensive product. So for those of you who want to try it, I strongly recommend that you, you discuss that with golden dent. The, um, smart dent and grinder is, is, is a pretty, pretty awesome alternative. So um, I'm going to finish up here, and uh, I'm going to turn you on to, to Kurt Lawler from Amplify and from Golden Dent. And uh, they pro we probably have some questions that we want to answer, and then uh, Kurt will go through some, maybe some of the specials that he was kind enough to provide those of you who have spent the last hour with me. Uh, hello, everybody. This is uh, Kerr Lawler with Golden Dent. Uh, thanks, Tim, for the um, excellent uh, presentation this evening. Uh, let me just get my slides up here, and I'll keep my portion pretty quick so I can make sure I get to the questions that were submitted by the attendees this evening. Um, so tonight, um, we focused on some of our regenerative materials. Um, a lot of us know us as the, uh, you know, the company that has the physics forceps, but um, extractions and grafting um, go hand in hand, and uh, we also do have a full line of regenerative materials, and that's what I wanted to um, uh, focus on this evening and what was demonstrated um, by Dr. Krasinski. Um, so we do have some very competitive prices. Um, we also have uh, some excellent um, grafting materials. We have uh, a kit that's inexpensive to keep it all together. It's the Krasinski kit, um, and then we also have some some other uh, more higher end instruments, which are which are flex series instrumentation, which I'll show you quickly, and those are going to be um, some some more advanced scissors and needle holders, and from some different types of instruments that uh, maybe you're more comfortable with for for grafting. Um, so tonight, the the topic was that grafting can can really be within the reach of um, of really any dentist with with a product like Osteogen. If the case um, calls for it, and you do not have a um, a buckle defect or all your walls are intact. The Estrogen is a really great product, and it's and as Tim mentioned, it's only forty two dollars a bullet uh, with no membrane. So it's a very cost effective graft. Uh, we've had a lot of really good feedback on it. It's a popular product for us, and that's what we highlighted at the beginning of the presentation. If you're still maybe not comfortable with membranes or aren't looking at allografts or or even the smart dent and grinder at this point. Um, this is a really great way to get involved, and, and you can look at the um, the Osteogen plug on on our website. Like I said, it's just, it's forty two dollars a bullet. Um, they come in boxes of five. You've got a um, a large size or a slim. The large can easily be cut too and, and rolled a little bit to make it basically into two slims. So the large size is probably the most popular. Um, so our particulate. So. Not not all all allograft is the same. I guess you know we do work with a very reputable bone bank or um, a, a tissue bank, and they have some really interesting um, technologies in their process. They're doing like a, a rice shape um, type fiber, which they're finding is um, integrating better than than some of the other allografts on the market. Um, so uh, we we love for anybody that that joined this evening if you are using a different allograft or a different um, brand. Um, we would love to to have um, you try our product, which is the Goldoss um, particulate or the Goldoss putty. Uh, we do have great product support here at our company. Um, we believe in our products. Um, you know, we're a smaller company. We we get back to the dentist right away, and we provide uh, really good clinical support if you have any questions on the products, which is you know, which not all companies do that. Uh, this is just a syringe real quick. This is the putty form. Uh, it's the same thing. It's an allograft. Uh, this one's a little bit more convenient. It's ready to use. Uh, it just depends on your preference. This is a smart dent grinder. I'll just mention this quickly. Uh, the, the initial investment of the machine with, with six uses, uh, you, you know, with the discount, it is around like $1,400. So there is a little investment to get involved with the machine. But what's really interesting is if you're doing multiple sites or uh, a whole arch or, uh, you know, say three or four sockets, each time you do use the product, it costs you around $49 uh, because it has a disposable chamber. You've got the cleanser and the saline wash and then the glass dish. That's all disposable components. Uh, so that actually is a very affordable graft. 
if you put um, you know, a couple molars or some anteriors or any mixture of teeth in there, you'll find that you have uh, an abundance of particulate uh, or dentin particulate. And um, it, it's interesting because you'll be able to do all of those sites for a cost of only $49, where if you were going to use a, an allograft, it'd be much more expensive. So it actually is an economical product beyond the clinical benefits that um, Dr. Kaczynski just showed. So something to take a look at, um, there's literature on it and, and some different information available on our website, or if anybody wants to see um, some specific articles, um, feel free to contact us and we can forward those on to you. Uh, the two membranes, I think we went over this in, in pretty good detail. Uh, EpiGuide is a great membrane, um, and then we have the Collaguide. It's two choices. Uh, we just stick with um, two uh, long-lasting resorbable membranes here at, at Golden Dent. We don't have any uh, non-resorbable membranes. Uh, we find that our instructors um, at our Amplify programs uh, are very happy with just using these membranes, which as long as they're long lasting, they will, um, they will take the place of uh, having a resorbable and a non-resorbable having to be stocked in your office. So these are two um, excellent choices. Um, it's a big membrane with the EpiGuide, so I just wanted to point that out if you're looking at the pricing on the product. Um, it's an 18 by 30 sheet, um, so most dentists are gonna be um, are probably going to be pre-cutting that sheet um, to make it into two different membranes. This is the uh, the kit that um, that Dr. Krasinski uh, helped us develop. Um, it, it, it's a basic kit. It's it's not expensive, but it's nice to have it all in in one cassette. And if you know you're going to do a grafting procedure, you're not looking for your different instruments. Um, it has a basic uh, scissors and, and hemostat, uh, but it has the important things um, like a curette and an Orban knife and a bone file um, as a spoon and a um, packer combo, which is a nice instrument. Uh, something to take a, a look at if maybe your grafting instrumentation is, is getting older or if you have different pieces that are separated, this is a nice way to keep it all together in a, um, in a, in a nice looking kit. So these are, our, uh, these are a little bit newer for us. This is our flex series of instruments. Uh, they are, they're really interest, interesting instruments. They're not your typical uh, hemostats or, or scissors. Really anything we have here at Golden Den, like our physics forceps or our WAM key crown remover, they're all unconventional instruments. And this flex series uh, falls along that same line. Uh, the suture scissors are not your, your typical suture scissors. And you can see uh, on the website, there's some, some demonstrations where uh, you can very easily cut buried sutures um, you're never going to damage the tissue. Uh, the needle holders are, are really excellent. They're made with a type of steel that's never going to bend or uh, not properly hold uh, the needle. Um, so we have a suture cutter on them. So it's just something to take a look at. It's not something we uh, really highlighted in the webinar this evening. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit more advanced um, in your graphing procedures, um, these are actually really popular instruments, and we've um, we just launched these not that long ago, but they've been they've been very popular for us with the shows. So physics forceps. This is um, this is the product that obviously started our company. It's been around for ten years now, which is which is really amazing. Um, it's had uh, ten years of excellent clinical feedback. Um, it's the same design and shape as it's been since um, two thousand and seven. Uh, the instruments are all made here in the USA. It's a high quality instrument. Uh, this is the most popular set of instruments. It's a series of four instruments. You have three for the upper and one for the lower. And this is what we would recommend if anybody's uh, maybe not comfortable with their extraction techniques or they're referring a lot of extractions or, or maybe they're just looking for a more efficient or predictable manner uh, to extract teeth like was, like was demonstrated this evening on the webinar. Um, this would be the series you want to take a look at. Um, we've got 90 days with this product, which is a very favorable um, policy. You've got three full months to see if it's a good fit for you, um, to make sure it's worth the, the investment and, and, and if it can change your practice. Um, so this is, a again, what started our company. Um, it's a proven product. We know it works. Um, and we give you that 90 days to, to try the product. So for anybody that already has maybe the standard series that I just showed you, uh, you can't access erupted third molars, and sometimes second molars can even be challenging with the standard series just because of the cheek restrictions. Uh, this set of two instruments is really designed for like erupted third molars and hard to reach second molars. It, they go straight into the mouth and get around the, uh, the cheek restriction. 
but you do lose a little of your leverage with this product. So if anybody hasn't um, tried the technique or if they want to evaluate the product, um, I would probably recommend the standard series, which is the other one I just showed. Um, but again, this is a nice accessory to, to the other product. Um, these are a little newer for us too. So we've always said that the physics forceps, you never needed to elevate in advance. And, and that is true um, it, because the physics forceps is not a forcep, it, it's really an elevator. Uh, you're not squeezing, you're rotating your wrist, you're elevating the tooth up and out of the socket. However, with dental implants and, and everybody wanting to be extremely careful with the, with the tissue during the extraction process, uh, these are some instruments that um, can be used prior to the um, extraction. We have the, the top two there, which is an, an S7 and an S6 separator. Those are like a, uh, they're like a micro serrated uh, periotome. They're uh, they have saw type blades. Um, it's a very light weight instrument. It's nice to um, go around the tooth and sort of saw away the tissue gently prior to the extraction, preventing any tearing or tissue damage. Um, and then the ones in the bottom, the most popular is probably the bayonet, um, but there's a curve to straighten a bayonet. There's some other kits on the market that have maybe 10 or 12 of these combined in some sort of a kit. Um, and working with Dr. Kaczynski and Dr. Nazarian, when we boiled it down to you really just need these three instruments in our experience, and it's not an expensive kit. These instruments are, uh, they're around like $70 each. They're not they not—they're not too expensive, but it's a good instrument to use uh, prior to the physics forceps or really any extraction technique you might be using uh, to ensure you have an atraumatic extraction. Um, so you can learn more about those on our website if you're interested. All right, I'll just mention this real quick and then I'll get into the, the questions. So Amplified Dental is our um, educational um, arm of Golden Dent. Uh, this is where we do all of our educational programs. We've been doing them at the University of Detroit for um, a number of years now. Um, it's an interesting program. We we um, we see around 85 uh, to 90, even 100 sometimes uh, live patients. And live patient education is really the best way to learn in our instructors' um, experience and what they believe in. Um, so we have we have two programs. We have one we call AMP1 which is an extraction one day program. And then we have AMP2, which is a two day program that's extractions and grafting. Um, so they're both comprehensive programs. AMP2 will definitely be more comprehensive because it's a two day program with a eight to nine hour lecture. And uh, the next one's coming up are September 30th and, and then August 18th and 19th. You can, you can learn more on amplifydental.com. Uh, we have a few seats open still. These courses always sell out um, if anybody's interested. And you can also use the um, discount um, promotional code that I'm going to provide here in a second uh, on our educational programs and uh, I would encourage anybody to do that. So I'm just going to show a couple quick pictures. This is a uh, Dr. Kaczynski helping a couple of our students um, at some of our past programs. This is Dr. R. Nazarian um, helping a group of um, of the attendees uh, working on a patient and the extraction program. Uh, you'll see we pair the doctors up in uh, groups of two. Uh, there's plenty of operatories. It's a very nice facility, um, good environment. And uh, we always have lots of staff to help, and they float around, and our instructors will help you with uh, learning uh, predictable grafting and extraction techniques. So it's a, it's a great program. There's really nothing like this in, a, in America. Um, you know, a lot of doctors fly out of the U.S. to do something like this, and uh, it's really not necessary. We have, a, we have a great program here in Detroit that's uh, easy to get to and, and easy to fly out that evening. This is just the, uh, the lecture portion at AMP2 in the morning. Um, it's at the Weston Hotel. Uh, but most of the course is held at the university, so we can do live patient treatment. We do some modeling work and things in the morning. Um, this is just a picture of the uh, the university in the morning prior to going onto the clinic floor. So here's the promo code that I think some of you are probably waiting for. So tonight, um, for investing your time this evening, uh, we're going to give a 15% discount um, on any of our products. That also includes our ed educational Amplify programs. Um, the promo code is is bone15, so it's just B-O-N-E-1-5. And you can take advantage of that special by, you can go to goldendent.com, but um, please note it's golden-dent.com, or if it's easier to remember, uh, physicsforceps.com will also take you to the same place. Um, yeah, so it's golden-dent.com or physicsforceps.com. Type in the promo code BONE15, 
and you will um, receive a 15% discount on your order, which is um, which is a great um, savings. It's actually, oops, go back here. It's actually more than our um, trade show pricing. My screen back here, sorry about that. Um, so the specials for 24 hours. So that's important to note. Um, we do these specials that are, they're good specials. We never do a discount any more than 10% at any trade show we attend. We do them for 15% on the webinars, but we do quick specials. So um, it's good through tomorrow night at midnight, June 21st. Um, again, pretty much any of our product, you're not stuck with it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Um, they all have favorable, you know, 30 day, 90 day type trials. Um, so I do encourage anybody to, to take advantage of um, the special 15% off, bone 15, and then I'll, I'll start getting the questions here. Um, so anyways, all right, so Dr. Kaczynski, the questions are gonna be, um, we've got a lot of questions here. Let me try to get through these. Um, in, in the case of a three wall defect, I got a buckle defect, um, do you ever use a, a double membrane, like a collagen covered with a, a, a PTFE? Um, can you hear me okay, Kurt? Yeah, I can hear you fine, yep. Okay, great. Um, and, and it's a great question. You know, there, there's so many different different ways of, of getting the result. And what I like to teach are the things that work well for me. I like to keep things really simple, Kurt. And I showed you the, the products that I use just about every day in my practice. And, um, you know, I do, I do draw blood. I do do... Um, um, uh, platelet-rich plasma, platelet-rich fibrin um, in certain situations, but um, in routine everyday use, I will use an art uh, allograph particulate and one of the two membranes that I that I illustrated. So I, I, I don't, I have never held, had a need for doubling up on anything. Okay, um, I, th I think I know the answer on this, but. It I'm not sure if you're doing this or not. I have heard people doing that. We obviously do have customers that do do this, I guess. But for the osteogen strips, I know we only talked about the plug this evening, but there are strips that are available. Um, it's the same material and product, but they're just in a um, a thicker looking membrane type square. H have you ever used those as a uh, like a replacement for a membrane? Uh, yeah, I, I have. Um, I have, and, and I didn't want to demonstrate that so much today because I assume that our audience would be um, less experienced or, or more novel. And um, again, the, the technique is very, very critical for predictability. But yes, it, it does work. Okay, perfect. Uh, is it okay to use osteogen plug in like a multi-rooted tooth? Um, yes, just, just cut it. Just You just cut it. You know, like if you have two roots or three roots, I would just, I would make it like um like a flower, cut it, you know, leave it, leave it attached at the crestal area and just cut the legs and in, and in, and in place it, or you can cut little pieces and put them in individually. Absolutely. Okay. Maybe, can you go over, um, just again, somebody asked how long does it take a membrane to dissolve? And I, I guess, um, I, I guess maybe just go over the, the time period that you're comfortable with again. I think you well, said it. And, last and again, that's a, that's a great question because all, uh, the, the turnover of bone is, is really going to be dictated by the, the size of the defect, uh, the material you use, and the, uh, just the physiologic response of the, of, the, of the body. You know, some people heal quicker than others. So what I, what I would like you to use is a membrane, a resorbable membrane, there are non-resorbable membranes that we would normally remove in six weeks. Let's leave that out of the equation right now. Let's keep it simple. We now have resorbable membranes that we do not have to physically remove that we want to be maintained in the mouth to protect invagination of epithelium into the graft for a minimum of six weeks. The, the membranes that I showed you will last four to five months in the mouth as needed, okay? which is wonderful for me because it just allows um, um, formation of bone. Remember how it heals. It heals from the apex towards the crest. So we're protecting it for a long period of time. What I, what I, my point with this, with this rule is that as dentists, we like to take shortcuts. We like to use inexpensive materials. And oftentimes we will use a collagen plug or a rep will tell you that a collagen plug is a, is a, is a graft or a membrane. It is not. 
it turns to snot in like three days. You must protect whatever graft material you have from invagination of epithelium for a minimum of six weeks to get predictability. Okay, perfect. Uh, next question would be, you know, we always get this question about fees. Um, so it says, it's kind of two questions in one. What is your fee for placing an estrogen plug? And then it says, do you charge extra when you when you use a membrane or if you have, um, you, you know, if you use an estrogen versus allograft or do you just have one standardized grafting fee um, regardless of materials and time? Well, yeah, that's a great question, Craig. You know, we're not supposed to talk fees. Um, I think it, that it really is up to the up to the dental practitioner because you know dental insurance number one isn't going to cover the grafting material, and so you need to decide the amount of time and the amount of cost that it is taking you to provide this service for your patient. Uh, I think it's imperative that we educate the patient on why this is important for future treatment, uh, but we also we also have to be aware that everybody's on a budget, and we have to work within their their frame. In our practice, we have one fee for all grafting materials, yeah, and, and a membrane is charged separately. Okay, yeah, and I think uh, our Nazarian feels the same way in our Amplify program. He'll, 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 he'll touch on this during our AMP2 program. He, he goes over a little bit of the business aspects of, of, uh, of dentistry or grafting, and he'll always say his concern is if you tell a patient it's one fee and then say all of a sudden you have to use another membrane or it's a, a bigger defect than you thought and then you have to go back and sort of nickel and dime them. So he, he sticks with a standardized fee too. All right, uh, if the facial plate is missing, can you um, place a membrane and an osteogen plug? Um, sure. All right, uh, the dent grinder. If somebody has a question, I guess, if one tooth is extracted, you know, is that normally enough particulate to, to fill the socket? So how, how much particulate or dentin graft, I guess, is generated um, usually? Well, Bert, maybe you can help me out with this. I think it's like three times. Yeah. Uh, it'll, it'll fill three times. It, it, it's, it's amazing how much particulate you get from one root. Yeah, yeah. in our experience with, um, with documenting these cases or looking at any of the literature is you'll have more than enough uh, of the graft material um, that you that you likely will not use. Um, yeah, I, the article is going to say, or the 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 guidance on the machine is going to say, usually three to four times the volume of the tooth in particulate. Um, so even if you are extracting ten teeth, it's very likely the dentist might only put five in there because he knows um, he's going to have more than enough graft material, so you don't even need to use all of the teeth. And so, for example, um, like. Like Dr. Kaczynski mentioned, if one of the teeth is endodontically treated or, or maybe has um, some artificial components you don't want to use in the grinder and the graft, you don't have to use every tooth. You, if you even have one or two um, decent teeth, I mean, that's going to produce enough graft for the, for the whole procedure very likely. All right. Um, another question on Smart Dent and Grinder. It says you mentioned about scrubbing the teeth before placing them in the grinder. Um, so it says, are you? scrubbing the teeth before you place them in the grinder. And then it asks a question about, um, a different question would be, um, you know, are you concerned if there's any bacteria still left or will the, the cleanser still take care of that in, in the cleansing process? And, and, well, thank you for answering that question, questioner. Um, yeah, um, you remove all the um, artificial material, you remove any decay, but even if you left a little bit, the, the cleanser will, will, will decontaminate the entire um, um, site. And, and obviously, you're putting the same material in, into the patient that you took the tooth out of. So, Okay. Um, just go with that. I'll respect everybody's time here. I'll go through just a couple. There's still quite a few, and we can answer some of these separately. Um, let me see here. Uh, somebody asked, I guess just to clarify this again, do you remove the crowns or the enamel uh, when using the Smart Dent Grinder? Um, I, I think the, the literature, you don't have to, but that's what I've been doing. I'm, I'm using the dentin rather than the, the enamel would be very hard. It would be more like like cortical bone. So it's going to take much longer to resorb. And, and what I want is I want a faster turnover of, of bone. Um, it's just stimulating because of the uh, all the growth factors um, in, in the autogenous material are present. So we get faster turnover with this product. So um, I remove the enamel. That's me. 
Okay, great. There's a few questions on like antibiotics, um, like with osteogen, do you prescribe an antibiotic or I guess what is your general protocol? Well, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question. And I just saw um, um, in, uh, from the American Academy of Implant Dentistry, um, you know, the research is saying the antibiotics probably aren't needed. I think that, that we as practitioners have to be realistic that if you do have an infected site, um, we do want to get that infected site under control. So um, uh, we're using low dose of antibiotic, Kurt. Uh, you know, I'm just using 250 milligrams three times, um, amoxicillin three times a day for three days, starting the day before if I can. So the amount of antibiotic that we're using is, is very minimal. And now the literature is coming out that we really should be dictating do we really need antibiotic in every situation? And the answer is probably no. Okay, uh, I guess let's do one or two more questions. The physics forceps, a couple combination type questions, I guess. Um, some people just said, can you clarify the sectioning? Um, do you section lower molars or upper molars and then do you element in advance? And then I guess just re-explain, re I guess, again, the purchase point, please. Sure, so um, in mandibular molars, the, the roots are often divergent and the bone is dense, it's type two bone, it's, it's relatively dense. So I've gotten into the habit of, of sectioning the roots and removing uh, each root, the mesial and distal root separately as if they were two single unit bicuspid teeth. It's just easier for me to do it that way. Uh, maxillary molar teeth, because it's medullary bone, it is very, very rare that I would section. I would just go right to the physics forcep and be able to remove that tooth very atraumatically. The instrument only works. Remember, the working end of the instrument is the shovel-shaped uh, beak, we call it, that engages the lingual or paddle aspect. The instrument will only work if you can engage the lingual or paddle, palatal aspect of that root. So we have to create a purchase point. And what I do is I'll take a 557 long surgical burr and flatten the root of the tooth. I'm not removing bone. I'm, I'm flattening the root of the tooth so that I can place the, the beak so it doesn't slip off. All right, perfect. Um, maybe I'll do just one last one here that just came in. Um, after the osteogen plug is placed, do you wait until the bone is completely radiopaque uh, before placing an implant? Great question. So remember I said a couple times that the way bone heals physiologically, it heals from the apex towards the crest. So the bone is, is the turnover of bone is much more mature at the apex than it is the crest. But I also know that I'm gonna place an implant, I'm gonna obliterate some of that, that bone material, I'm gonna take it away, and also I'm gonna allow the implant to integrate for another three to four months. So the answer is no. When I see that there is um, good bone at the apex, that's where I want my primary stability to occur in my implants, I, I feel comfortable. And it's usually, with osteogen, it's usually three months, four months, and what's nice is you can radiographically determine it. You can say, oh, the, the bone is going to change. It becomes more opaque over a period of time. And it's going to be different with different patients. Okay, well, I want to, um, I guess, respect everybody's time this evening. I think we, we said we were going to wrap up um, you know, a little bit after 9, so it's 9.22 now. So um, I guess one more thing I just want to mention. So if anybody is interested in trying our products, and if, if, you do, if you're having issues in the shopping cart on our website, which which we we always have some in, individuals or somebody that's gonna can have an issue determining where to put the code or why it's not working. But anyways, if you just type a comment or a note um, at the top, we'll we'll apply the proper pricing. Sometimes people will just type a note that says, "Hey, I was on the webinar. I couldn't get the code to work." Um, th don't worry about that. Just complete your order. We'll fix it on our end. So, all right. Um, well, I want to thank everybody. Uh, for joining this evening, and I want to thank um, Dr. Tim Kaczynski. It's another excellent presentation, and I hope everybody enjoyed the webinar this evening. And look for um, in the next you know month and a half or so uh, another future webinar, and we'll we'll try to do a different topic. Um, I appreciate it, and have a good night, everybody. Have a good night.